spring is in the air and that means it's a fresh new chapter, a new opportunity to get round to those things that you never normally get round to, like spring cleaning. What does spring cleaning have to do with your finances? So much. Decluttering your finances is a really great way to get some extra headspace so that you can head into the new season feeling like you control your money and not the other way around. In the spirit of getting organized, this video is all about decluttering your finances to make your money management simpler. And I'm going to cover everything from why you should bother, where you should start, to common ways that you can streamline your finances. I, for one, always prided myself on having really simple finances. But as I got older, I started to accumulate baggage and before I knew it I took a look at my financial setup and realized that things had gotten a little bit messy. I had multiple different pensions from different jobs that I'd had. I had somehow amassed a whole range of bank accounts and savings accounts, investment accounts. I also had tax admin in multiple countries and a non-operational business that I had to do admin for and pay taxes for. And basically I had reached a point where I was no longer keeping track of all the things that I needed to keep track of. Plus there was a whole bunch of admin that I was constantly trying to avoid. It didn't feel great and so I realized I needed to simplify. If you've lived a little by now, you might benefit from streamlining your finances too. You've probably heard by now that in order to make financial progress, you need to get real intimate with your finances and have a really clear idea of how much money you actually have and how much you spend. But that gets harder and harder to do the more pension logins you supposedly have but can't find and endless credit card accounts that you need to keep track of and zero system for keeping all the different parts fitting together nicely. So given the complexity of our financial lives as we get older, it's going to take a little bit of effort to tidy things up. But from personal experience, I will tell you that it is 110% worth it. Taking the time to streamline and simplify your financial life is going to make it easier to keep track of things, which in turn makes it easier to plan ahead. You're going to lower the risk of paying for things that you didn't realize you were paying for or missing opportunities because you're out of touch with the interest rates that your various bank accounts are currently charging you. Plus, simplifying your finances is going to reduce the cognitive load you carry around with you, giving you more headspace to focus on fun things that you actually care about. Let's quickly talk about the Zygonark effect here. This is a concept from behavior science that says if you have a task that is incomplete, that task is going to weigh on your mind until you get it done. Essentially, if you have a nagging feeling about things you should be doing, that nagging feeling, unfortunately, is not going to go away until you take action. So how do you actually go about simplifying your finances? When things are a little bit complex, this first step can obviously be pretty overwhelming. What I did is I set aside time to just take stock. Put a date and time in your diary as if you were meeting a friend for coffee and then stick to it. A good way to do this is to throw in a fun element. So you could actually take yourself off to your favorite coffee shop and do it there or put some really nice music on in the background so that the whole thing feels just a little bit less like admin and a little bit more pleasant. One thing to note, though, is that it's best to schedule this time when you are going to have mental capacity to tackle it. OK, so you set your date and you have now sat down at the allotted time. What you want to do is make a list of all the places where your money is. So that could be your pensions, your investment accounts, your savings accounts. And then you want to do the same thing for where you're spending your money. So that would be your credit card accounts or your insurance. And then obviously you want to make a note of your current accounts as well. The thing to note here is that this stage of the process, it's about getting a top level view of how your finances are organized. Next up, you want to take a little time to think about the stuff that comes up regularly that you hate doing. So these are these money related tasks that constantly have you thinking, oh my gosh, there has got to be a better way to do this. For me, this was that non-operational company I was talking about where every single year I had to file a tax return for a business that wasn't even earning any money 
for you, it might be your personal tax return if you're in the States or the manual nature of your investment strategy. Another way to look at this is those regular financial admin tasks that every time they come up, you think, wow, why didn't I just do X, Y, Z earlier? Because it would make this current task so much easier. And once you've thought about the tasks that you don't particularly enjoy, the next thing to do is to go through the entire list that you have so far and identify the clutter. Where do you use three bank accounts where one bank account would more than suffice? What do you do manually that could potentially be automated? What processes do you keep repeating because you are not sure what the next step is or you don't know how to improve it? For example, I put off sorting out my tax situation in South Africa for the longest time because I had no idea how to access it online from another country. Once you've identified your clutter, the next thing to do is to prioritize what actions you're gonna take first. There are a whole bunch of different ways that you can approach the prioritization. It could be based on cost, so what things are costing you the most money or taking up most of your time. You could start with the easiest thing on the list so that you get something done and feel motivated by taking that first step. Or you could go about it in the opposite way, tackle the biggest, hairiest, scariest thing first so that it's off your list. And once you have your list prioritized, you're gonna pick one thing, just one, and then you're going to give yourself a deadline to take action on that one thing. The deadline thing is important because Parkinson's law says that a task will expand to the amount of time that you give it. So if you decide you're going to do a thing at some stage, you will spend ages not doing it. If you say, I'm going to do it this week, you then have a deadline and instead of taking a month, it will take you a week. And then once you've done your one thing, you figure out the second most important thing. And on you go until your finances are sparkling clean. And to bring us full circle in this video, here are some common ways that you could simplify your finances. You could consolidate your old pensions. If you go down this route, double check how much it's going to cost you to move them across because this will only be worth it if the fee structure is in your favor. Like I mentioned earlier, you could consolidate your bank accounts. Automating your regular transactions. This one is super easy and has made so much difference to my own finances. And you could take a proactive approach to your admin. If you are always kicking yourself for not having all your tax documentation ordered by the time the tax filing deadline comes around, you can set yourself a reminder such as an email so that that task is achieved little by little instead of one big chunk of stressful time. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.